All right, this is AP AB Calculus and BC Calculus, and we're doing Unit 1, Section 10, which is Exploring Types of Discontinuities. So we're going to discuss uh, three big types of discontinuities, uh, holes, jumps, and vertical asymptotes. So let's jump right in. So uh, first off, we're going to talk about uh, the big categorization, removable and non-removable. So removable, think about that as like not a big deal, right? Uh, another way that you'll see that worded in some textbooks is non-essential, right? Meaning that what's wrong is not a huge big deal issue. Uh, whereas non-removable are really big deals or essential discontinuities, right? They're, they're a big deal. So if you're pretending that the curve that you're driving or that you're drawing is like a road that you're driving on, right? If you were driving on a road and there was a little pothole and then you kept going, that's an example, example of a removable discontinuity, right? Because it's not a big deal. But if instead you were driving on a road and then, oops, there's a giant cliff. Okay, that's an example of a non-removable or essential discontinuity. Or if you were driving on a road and you drove up to infinity and some other person on a different road was driving uh, all the way from negative infinity up, right? So that's, those are examples of non-removable or essential discontinuities. So what we're going to discuss in this video is we're going to look at how we can see from the limits, the left and right limit, uh, what these discontinuities are. So we're going to kind of integrate this information into what we already know about limits. So moving on to our next slide. All right, so we have a hole, right, uh, which is a removable discontinuity. We're going to find the left and right limit, and then the double-sided limit, and the actual function value, um, meaning f of 2. And I've depicted it here in three different ways. These are uh, all of the same information, right? Uh, but so, so this is the this is the graph. This is the equation for that graph, and this is a table from that equation. And I just so so it's all the same information. But I just want to show you that you can use any of those three to find this information. So, uh, so if the three things I'm asked to find are the left-sided limit, so the limit as x approaches two from the left, right? The right-sided limit, the limit as x approaches two from the right, right? Uh, the double-sided limit, limit as x approaches 2, right, of that f of x. And then lastly, whatever f of 2 is, right, with the actual function value of 2. Okay, so honestly, if it's me, I think the easiest of these three options is the graph. Uh, here's the left-sided limit. It's approaching a y value of 4, right? Uh, and here's the right-sided limit, also a y value of 4, which means the double-sided limit is 4. But as you can see from this open circle, the function is undefined at 2, right? Now you would have been able to confirm that here as well, right? So, so these are the values. This would have been my left-sided limit, and sure enough, it's a 2. This would have been from the right if you I just wrote a vertical table instead of the horizontal one that we've been seeing. So from the right, values larger than 2, also approaching a 2. And then the actual value of 2 is undefined, right? If you had done it here, you could actually simplify this by factoring out an x squared. And what you're going to find is that these two cancel, and this just behaves like an x squared with a whole at x equals 2, right? Um, and sure enough, that confirms what we have here, because as I approach 2, right, as I approach 2, I would get 2 squared and 2 squared, and oh, look, that's a 2 squared, and then the actual value is undefined. All right. Try P1 the same way. Again, this is a hole, which is a removable discontinuity. Uh, again, at 2, right? We're going to look at what happens. So uh, we're going to find the three limits, left, right, and double-sided limit. And then we're also going to find the value of the function. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, and the double-sided limit as x approaches 2 and then f of 2, right? And again, I don't care which of these you use to do it. They're all exactly the same. Uh, they're all the same information. I just wanted to show you three different ways to compare. So if I use the graph, which I think is the easiest of the options, I can see that both the left and right limits are 3, which makes the double-sided limit a 3, but that f of 2 is undefined. I can confirm that on the table, right? You can see that as I approach 2 from the left, I'm approaching uh, a value of 3, right, 2.999. And as I approach from the right, I'm approaching a value of 3, right, but that the actual function value is undefined. Or I could confirm that by factoring, right, this is going to factor into an x minus 2 times an x plus 1 over an x minus 2 
These cancel, meaning this behaves like an x plus 1 with a hole at x equals 2. And sure enough, if you plug in 2 plus 1, there's your y value of 3. All right. Cool. Now let's talk about a jump, which is a non-removable discontinuity. So uh, we're going to find the left limit, the right limit, and the double-sided limit, and then the actual function value, in this case, at 0. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, the limit as x approaches 0 with no side, which is the double-sided limit, and lastly, f of 0. Now, we've actually seen this graph before. Uh, it came up in one of our previous videos. So uh, again, I think the graph is the easier option. So as you approach from the left, you can see that the y values are consistently negative 1. And sure enough, that's confirmed right here on the table, right? Um, as you approach from the right, you can see that the y values are 1. And that's confirmed right here on the table, where the right-sided limit is definitely also approaching 1, right? Which means my double-sided limit does not exist. And then f of 0 is undefined, which you can tell from both the graph, which has two open circles, no closed circles, and also from the table, right? So this is undefined. Now, a thing to notice is that the most complicated of the three to use is this. In this situation, the only other way to do it, if you didn't want to use the graph or the table, is to do exactly what we did in the other video, right? In a previous video, we saw that this actually behaves like a piecewise function. Right? It behaves as a negative x over x, which is a negative 1 for x values less than 0. And it behaves as an x over x, which is the same as a 1 for x values greater than 0. And sure enough, that confirms what we already found. All right, let's do a P3. So again, we have a jump. And what you're going to see here is a piecewise function with a red piece and a blue piece. Uh, all three of these pieces of information, the graph, the table, and the equation, convey the same information. And we're going to find those four values, right? So my limit as x approaches 1 from the left, my limit as x approaches 1 from the right, my double-sided limit as x approaches 1, and the actual function value at 1, right? So from the left, again, I'm going to default to the graph being the easiest option if I have it. From the left, I'm definitely approaching a 4. From the right, I am definitely approaching a 0 which means the double-sided limit does not exist. The actual closed dot is right here on the blue curve at 0, right? You can confirm that up here. Your left limit, sure enough, is approaching a 4, which is what we have right here, right? Your right limit is approaching a 0, which is what we have right here. That means that the double-sided limit doesn't exist, and then you can see that the actual function value is very clearly a 1. And you could have also confirmed that by plugging in here. Right? If you'd chosen to do this using the equation, and I'm just showing you that you have options, if you did this with the equation, the left-sided limit would have used the x plus 3. So this would have used 1 plus 3, which gives me the 4. The right-sided limit would have used the x squared minus 2x plus 1, which would have been 1 minus 2 plus 1, which gives me the 0. The actual function value would use the one where there's an equal to, which again gives me a 0. And because the two limits aren't the same, the double-sided limit does not exist. All right, moving on to some asymptotes. So vertical asymptote, which is a non-removable discontinuity. We're going to find the left limit, the right limit, the double-sided limit, and the actual function value at negative 3. Uh, again, depicted in three ways. As a side note, uh, there's an entire video on vertical asymptotes. So if right now this seems kind of foreign, uh, don't panic about it. Uh, we're going to do an entire video on vertical asymptotes uh, in Unit 1, Section 14, and this is uh, currently Section 10, so a couple more videos. You could certainly jump ahead if you wanted to see what I'm talking about. So we've got this vertical asymptote here at negative 3, right? Again, I'm going to default to the fact that if you have the graph, it's easiest to use the graph. So I need the left-sided limit. I need the right-sided limit. I need the double-sided limit. and I need f of negative 3. Okay, so if I'm using my graph, right, I'm, as I approach negative 3, this guy, like, this poor little stick figure, like, plummets down forever. Ah! Right? So, so he's going down to a negative infinity. On the, on the right side, this guy, on the other hand, is like, oh my gosh, the cardio, my legs, because he's going up forever. Since negative infinity and positive infinity are not the same, this is, does not exist. And as you can see at the vertical asymptote, the graph is not defined, so it's undefined. 
Now we can find that from the table, but we have to use a little bit of logic. If you look at the table values, these aren't approaching a single particular small finite number. It's very clear that I go from 20 to 200 to 2000, that the next one, if I got, if I use negative 3.0001, I would be at negative 20,000. If I get a little closer, I'm at negative 200,000 and so on. So that's definitely approaching a negative infinity. And you can see that in this direction, the same thing's happening. But again, I'm going from 20 to 200 to 2,000 to 20,000 to 200,000, et cetera. That's approaching infinity. Um, if you were going to do this from an equation, uh, I'm going to save what we would do if we were doing this from an equation for uh, video, sorry, for video uh, 0114, because uh, we're going to spend a fair amount of time doing that in 0114. All right. So let's talk about P3. So vertical asymptote, same basic idea, right? Um, so I want the limit from the left, right? So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. I want the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. I want the double-sided limit. And I want the actual function value. So again, as you get better at doing these, you're going to notice that this doesn't take all that much work. I can see that the left-sided limit on the graph is going down forever. That's a negative infinity. It's definitely confirmed on the table, right? I can see that the right-sided limit this guy's walking uphill forever, that's going to infinity. And again, that's confirmed on my table. If you look at these values, they're getting huge and they're not showing any signs of stopping getting huge, uh, which means the double-sided limit does not exist. And at a vertical asymptote, the graph is undefined. Again, we're gonna talk about how to do this in uh, unit one, section 14. All right, that's unit one, section 10.